Hello and welcome back to the top 85 games for the BBC Micro Video Countdown. In at number 54 is an interesting game, it's System Wedgbury. Uh, this was developed by a chap called Andrew Cook back in uh, 1987 and it was released uh, in the May edition of the 1988 Disc User magazine. Uh, it came out again uh, on a public domain disc and was published a third time, in fact, in the Electron user group uh, on their disc number 37 in April 1998. So a uh, popular game with a couple of re-releases. Uh, basically, the game revolves around a character called Winglebith, who is a slightly strange looking character who um, is charged with defusing a bomb and getting all of the various nuclear devices uh, into some sort of black hole um, in order to complete the level. Uh, so it's a puzzle game. Uh, in addition to the four, four puzzles that the game comes with, uh, you also have your own editor as well that enables you to create fresh puzzles for you to solve. And we'll be taking a look at both in this video. All right, let's fire it up. Chain Wadger, lovely. So here we are, System Wedgbury by Andrew Cook, copyright 1987. Um, fairly simple controls, so let's dive in. Uh, we're going to start by pressing G to load the game. Nice little wiggle sound there. Uh, so for the uninitiated, uh, to load up, you can press SCR1, and away we go. Here we are. So you have a choice of difficulty setting. Um, it, because it's me, I'm going to go with 9 for easy. Uh, and then you can pick your level A through D. Um, so we go with 9 and A. Here we are. This is the game. You can see two level bars at the top there. Oh, and look at this. We've got some music. This is quite an unusual uh, feature for a BBC micro game. So uh, the two bars at the top, the one that's moving slightly faster is the one that controls the uh, bomb. So basically if that one reaches the end, the bomb explodes and it's game over. But if you surround the bomb, uh, as per what I've just done there, you'll see that the, uh, the bar stops moving. But the other bar will continue to move because that one is necessary um, for the game to tell you basically how much time you've got left. Um, so a time-based puzzle. Now you can see these nuclear devices here. Uh, I need to move those into the what I tend to call the black holes there. I'm not quite sure what they're supposed to be. You do have to be careful. Uh, if you get too close and you send uh, send Winglebith into them, uh, you will actually die. So we'll try and avoid doing that. Um, so first level, fairly straightforward, not too, not too challenging. Basically just introduces you to the features. Um, so there we are. Now we'll go through here. Now those arrows indicate that I can only move in a certain direction. Um, and there we are. Game complete. Um, so you'll appreciate from that that uh, in addition to diffusing the bomb and getting rid of the nuclear devices, you also have to collect all the uh, bits of soil um, and the stars as well. Now that rather irritating noise is because we've got um, an extra friend with us on this level, and if I take out the soil here, he will now chase us around the grid. Um, so what we need to do is trap him in some nuclear blocks, and that will see, see to him. Hopefully we can get him now, and oh, too soon, there we go. Right, now I like to get rid of these um, at this point, just because they, they, they tend to get in the way of what we need to do next. So let's get, let's get those out, push this over here, So and push this one down here. So yes, it's a, it's a, it's a time-based challenge, um, and on this level it actually does get a little bit trickier, as we shall see, because um, first of all I've got to move all of these out of the way before I can actually properly defuse the bomb, but let's, uh, let's get the first one in place anyway. And move this over here, pop that in there, and actually we might just dispense with that one as well, just so that that gives us a clear exit for all the various boulders. Now you'll appreciate if you, uh, with these boulders that are up against the wall, you can't you can't bounce them off the wall. So basically, you have to uh, you have to negotiate them in such a way as to be able to get them in place without hitting the the far sides or getting them wedged up against something else. System system wedgebury at that point, um, because if you uh, otherwise you'll find that you then can't move them and uh, that's it. You know, unfortunately, you you won't be able to complete the level. So what we're going to do here is 
push this over there, and then that lets us push that in there. That's got rid of that one. Uh, now, what should we do for the next one? Let's try... Ah, uh, oh, I'm not sure whether I should have done that, actually. Ah, oh, yes, now that one I can get, so I can push that out there. And then if I come around the other side, push that there. Excellent. Okay, now let's see if we can deal with this one. Uh, maybe... Oh dear, I've not got much time left. Um, ah, I think if I come around here... Uh, oh, no, that hasn't helped me at all. Um, hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Ah, yes, hang on. Oh dear, I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough time to do it, but yep, there we go, that's that one in there. Uh, now what do I do with this one? Um, oh dear. Uh, okay, let's push that down there. Ah, yes, that's it, there we go. Now pop that in there, now I just need to get rid of the soil. And one, two, three, there we go. Perfect. Ah, oh, yes, now we're on to a slightly trickier level here. Um, I'll be honest, I've never actually completed this one, so that gives you a good indication of my abilities at System Wire 3. Um, I was actually quite pleased with myself for being able to clear the second level, that took me quite a few goes. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, that's probably a time to reflect on the on the game itself. Um, it's uh, it's it's really quite a quite a charming little game, I think. Um, you know, it's been very well very well assembled. Um, responds very well, and I, I do like a good a good puzzle game. Um, you know, it's it's got the time the time challenge element to it to keep it interesting, um, but also it's about trying to find your uh, find your way um, around the grid. In oh dear, well, <laughs> I think I've. Uh, not going to be able to get any further than that. Um, yes, it's 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 a way of uh, sort of solving a challenge, very reminiscent of Repton. Um, we'll be seeing more of Repton in uh, later videos, rest assured. Uh, but it's definitely got that sort of Repton feel to it, I would say. Um, yes, I think I have now managed to block myself in. So uh, yes, that's slightly annoying. Um, oh, hang on, hang on. Can I get out here? Yes. Oh, no, no, okay. Never going to be able to get to that star though. I've also managed to block myself out of those. Right, I tell you what, I'm going to kill myself. Winglebith is dead. Oh dear. Um, ooh, to the Hall of Fame. Excellent stuff. Okay, so I think what we'll do next is uh, we will reboot, and this time we're going to use the uh, we're going to use the editor and have a little bit of fun with that. Um, so first of all, uh, let's go for a reset. There we go chain wadger once again and we will load the editor now in true blue peter fashion uh, i am going to load up one that we made earlier there we go so um yes this is the editor uh, so as you can see basically uh, it allows you to put what you want where you want um, you can change the tile um, to basically put things as you want so i could put one of those there um, if I decide that I don't want uh, Winglebith to start there, I can I can remove him and just move over to Winglebith. There he is. Um, you know, I could could put him right next to the bomb. Let's say, um, yeah, let's put him there. And oh, let's let's have this uh, let's have this tyrant, shall we? Should we pop him over here. Now we're going to need to be able to um, block him in, I think. Otherwise, he's going to he's going to cause us some trouble. So let's put some. Let's put some earth squares around him, that tends to keep him at bay. And I think we're going to need to put uh, a trap for him as well. So let's get uh, let's get some of these, let's get this set up over here, shall we? So we'll put one of those there, there, there. Oh no, wait, that's that's going to make it an unsolvable puzzle, isn't it? Sorry, let's, uh, let's, let's remove some of those, otherwise... <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise you'll never be able to solve it. There we go. Uh, and we'll put an extra one there to block him in, shall we? There we go. So, um, then, uh, yes, we'll uh, save that one. And we save that. Excellent. Now you can make up to four puzzles. I've only done puzzle A. Um, oh dear, disc is read-only. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> 
that that was a bit of a faux pas on my part. Uh, let's just assume that uh, that 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 we did manage to save that. Um, I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll do a little bit of uh, creative editing so that that looks like that actually works. <laughs> um, so the next thing we're going to do is reset so that we can uh, we can play the game that we've just made. Restart and then this time when we play the game we can put in Colin instead of SCR1. And if we use, make sure that we select level A, we're in. And here is what we created earlier. Um, and now it's like playing System Wedgebury, but this time with our own level. So rather, rather clever stuff. So let's see if our, if our plan to trap this little blighter in here was going to work. Um, oh, 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 hang on. And this could be a problem. Ah. Oh! <laughs> Winglebith is dead already. Um, okay, well, let's try that again. <laughs> it didn't really work very well. But yes, I think that this uh, this all goes to show that uh, you know it's it's a, it's a really uh, it's a really smart little game that you know in addition to the puzzles that it comes with, that you can just play around to your heart's content and it, it effectively make endless puzzles of your own. Um, you know, it's it's it, I think it's great that uh, that it comes with that facility. To be honest, I mean. Uh, Games with their own editors, or that had the capacity even to have their own editors back in the uh, back in the day. There we go, we've dispensed with them. Uh, you know, it's quite it's quite a feat because I mean, you've got to have all of the uh, all of the programming available just to uh, just to be able to actually. Oh, oh dear, too, too, too much talking there. Too much talking. <laughs> um, okay, well I think I think we're going to uh, give that one more try. Um, Yes, to, to a game that came with its own editor in addition to the, the actual gameplay mechanics itself. I mean, it's you know it's really really quite special. Oh dear, that wasn't a good idea, was it? <laughs> um, right, let's see if we can get him to go in. There we go, and then I think that should be. Oh wait, no no no. There we are. Excellent. Um, I'm not actually sure that that's going to work now because I've got too many nuclear devices all stacked up with each other. So I think I've. I think I've uh, might have possibly yes that one. I'm never going to be able to get rid of that one, unfortunately. Anyway, never mind. So let's see how much more of the level we can do. Now you see those stars actually keep boosting up the uh, timer for the bomb, but sadly they don't do anything for the uh, the overall level timer. So um, I, I, I think given my uh, given my, my mistakes, I'm probably not going to uh, be able to complete the level anyway. But uh, let's let's give it a good uh, a good stab, nevertheless. Um, but yes, it's um, it's you know, it's a really fun game. I, you know, I think it's great that it's squeezed in some background music as well. I mean, to be honest, if you play this game for anything more than about 20 minutes or so, that background music becomes pretty irritating pretty quickly, uh, because it really is just the same repetitive song over and over and over again. Um, but you know, I, I, I think we shouldn't be too harsh on System Watch Brief for that. I think it's uh, it's great that it's, that it's even got any background music. Let's be, let's be honest. I mean, a lot of oh dear, I've done it again. I do that so many times. Um, let's go back to one of the original. Uh, let's go back to one of the original levels. I think. Um, let's try. Uh, let's try going back to where we where we left off last time. So let's go SCR one, and uh, we'll give. Uh, let's give the third level a try. Um, yes, I. I, I I think that uh, you know it, it's, it's praise in itself just to just to have a bit of background music because uh, so many BBC micro games, in fact, almost all of the ones I think we've seen in this uh, video series so far, uh, don't have any at all. Um, and you know that's not always a not always an issue. You know if the gameplay is good enough, then actually background music isn't necessary. Uh, you can always listen to something else. Let's be let's face it. Um, and uh, you know let's face it, it's, it can sometimes be better to have no music than to have music that really becomes very, very tedious. Um, I think the System Wide Free tune is actually quite quite sweet. Uh, it's not a, not a bad little tune, and uh, yeah, it's um, certainly not something I would uh, would uh, criticise too much. Ah, I've actually managed to get another boulder out here. That was actually quite, quite, quite accidental. Um, ah, the problem is that the one that I needed to do at the bottom is now stuck in here. 
<laughs> just my luck. Um, yes, now you'll notice that with the boulders, by the way, you can't move multiple boulders in one go. You can only move them individually, um, whereas those nuclear things, you can actually move multiple ones at the same time. If you manage to line them up with those little cushions in the corner, uh, that lets you bounce it off the wall, which is another little feature. Um, yeah, and I think all of it all together just, just shows you know what an intelligent little puzzle game it is. It's, you know, it's been a lot of thought that's gone into it. Um, it's very, very playable. Um, you know, it does give you an exit route, um, <laughs> as demonstrated. <laughs> you don't get any lives, uh, so, you, so you have no progress saved. You, know, you, you have to complete these puzzles one after the other um, in sequence to get the best possible score. Because otherwise, uh, your, uh, you know, your, 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 once Winglebith is dead, it's very final. You know, Winglebith is, uh, is a one-life man. Um, once he's once he's bitten it, that's it. Uh, so yes, yeah, so you do have to you do have to uh, do your best. But having said that, out of the box, you only get uh, you only get four puzzles to contend with. So actually, it's not um, it's not beyond the realms of human ability to do all four in sequence, uh, unless you're me, obviously. Uh, that goes without saying. Um, but uh, yes, it's a, it's, a, yeah, it's a really neat little game. Um, I, I think, once again, just goes to show how cover disc games really could hold their own. Um, you know, the, the idea that a cover disc game is something to sort of sneeze at or, or to treat with sort of derision, um, absolutely no way. I think, uh, you know, the cover disc games like this, they're, they're, they're out there with some of the best games available for the BBC. Um, no, no doubt about it. Um, you know, a game like this that came on a cover disc with music, its own editor, um, and an absolutely brilliant puzzle engine. I mean, what? <laughs> I, I, I do think you, you, you sort of struggle to, 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 uh, to really come up with something more, even from a, from a commercial release. And there were plenty of commercial releases that were uh, considerably worse than uh, System Wedgbury. Now, if I do this correctly, I might might be able to actually complete this level um, but of course it is me so there's every chance that I will actually balls this up um, yes now how do I how am I gonna do this mm. uh, I think I might have probably yeah I don't know if I can do this oh wait hang on if I come up around here can I If I do that, then that's, that's, that comes over here. No, see, if, if I push that that way or that way, it's going to block the block the diamond in, isn't it? No. <laughs> Look at that. I had one final bit to com to, to complete the level, and uh, I've managed to uh, completely uh, <laughs> completely outdo myself. Well. Splendid stuff. Um, hopefully, some of you watching will have seen the obvious flaw in what I just did, and will know uh, will know how to complete this level. Um, I might give it one more try, um, just to just to give uh, System Wadbury a fair innings. Um, but uh, yes, I'm not sure whether I'm not sure whether we're going to get much further than that on this level. Um, yeah, so I'd be interested to hear from any of you that have played this game before. Um, I, I feel like it's not one of the one of the most well-known games. Um, I saw it uh, retweeted as a as a screenshot on uh, Twitter a couple of months ago now, um, and it didn't seem to attract a lot of attention, which makes me think perhaps not that many people have actually played it before, uh, which would be a shame if that's the case because uh, yeah, it's a great game. Um, I think part of the reason, I may have said this in previous videos, and part of the reason why um, a lot of the video games that are showing up in this uh, video series are from cover discs is because um, I, you know, I was lucky to have uh, people in my, my family that, uh, you know, that bought the magazines that uh, had these games on them uh, as, as, as a cover disc item. Um, ah, now I can get my extra boulder from here. Excellent. Yeah, so um, perhaps that's partly why games like this might not have been on the radar for some people, because uh, if you only relied on um, commercial releases and, you know, purchased games, then uh, something like this may well have uh, gone under the radar. Ah, no, I'm not going to be able to do it because I'm not going to get that star in the corner. Alright, tell you what, we'll take a look at puzzle number four, just so that the review is complete, um, and then I think we'll call it a day on System Wadgebury. So let's see what the... Oh my goodness! <laughs> okay, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> um, 
yes, okay. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Okay, let's push those in, pop all those in. I thought those were, were rebounded, reboundable cushions, but they're not. I must have mistaken that in another level for something that it wasn't. Okay, let's see if we can get these out. Uh, push these over here. It's a sort of game of quadrants, isn't it? You've got you've got various things going on here. You see, look, that one won't move at all. I mean, I don't know how you're ever supposed to get that one in, unless it was me that moved it there. I don't really see how that's possible. Um, hmm. Well, let's, uh, let's claim a few of these while we're here. Oh. <laughs> I, think, I think this is literally the last bit of the level that you're supposed to go into, which I should have realised because it's only got a one-way arrow. Oh well, Winglebiss is once again dead. Um, I think we'll call it the day there, uh, but uh, that was System Wadgebury from Andrew Cook. Um, I, I, I hope you've enjoyed the review, and uh, even more so, I hope that you'll go and check out System Wadgebury yourself, because uh, it is well worth um, a, a few minutes of your time, if not a few hours. Uh, the puzzles are great fun, and it's even more fun actually making, making your own puzzles with the editor. So, um, hope you've enjoyed the review, and until the next time, goodbye!